Counter jihad or counter jihad or counter jihad movement is a political current loosely consisting of authors, bloggers, think tanks, street movements, and campaign organizations all linked by a common belief that the Western world is being subjected to takeover by Muslims. Several academic accounts have presented conspiracy theory as a key component of the counter jihad movement. On a day-to-day -day level, it seeks to generate outrage at perceived Muslim crimes. While the roots of the movement go back to the 1980s, it did not gain significant momentum until after the September 11 attacks in 2001 and the 7 July 2005 London bombings. As far back as 2006, online commentators such as Fjordman were identified as playing a key role in forwarding the nascent counter-jihad ideology. The movement received considerable attention following the 2011 Norway attacks whose manifesto extensively reproduced the writings of prominent counter-jihad bloggers, and following the emergence of prominent street movements such as the English Defence League The movement has been variously described as pro-Israel, anti-Islamic, Islamophobic, inciting hatred against Muslims, or far-right. The movement has adherents both in Europe and in North America. The European wing is more focused on the alleged cultural threat to European traditions stemming from immigrant Muslim populations, while the American wing emphasizes an alleged external threat, essentially terrorist in nature. Overview Counter-jihad is a transatlantic, radical right wing movement that, via the sharing of ideas between Europeans and Americans and daily linking between blogs and websites on both sides of the Atlantic calls for a counter jihad against the supposed Islamization of Europe. While the roots of the movement go back to the 1980s, it did not gain significant momentum until after the September 11 attacks in 2001. The authors of right wing populism in Europe, Politics and Discourse describe the movement as heavily relying on two key tactics. The first is arguing that the most radical Muslims, men like Osama bin Laden, are properly interpreting the Quran, while peaceful moderate Muslims either do not understand their own holy book or are strategically faking their moderation. The second key tactic is to relentlessly attack individuals and organizations that purport to represent moderate Islam, painting them as secret operatives in a grand Muslim scheme to destroy the West. Benjamin Lee describes the counter jihad scene as one where, Europe and the United States are under threat from an aggressive and politicized Islamic world that is attempting to take over Europe through a process of Islamification with the eventual aim of imposing Sharia law. In this process, the threat is characterized by the perceived removal of Christian or Jewish symbols, the imposition of Islamic traditions, and the creation of no go areas for non Muslims. The construction of mosques in particular is seen as continued reinforcement of the separation of the Muslim population from the wider populace. As strong as the threatening practices of Muslims in descriptions of the counter-jihad are images of a powerless Europe in decline and sliding into decadence, unable to resist Islamic takeover. The idea that European culture in particular is in a state of decline, while a spiritually vigorous East represented by Islam is in the ascendancy in civil society, is a common sentiment in some circles. Two central counter-jihad themes have been identified The notion that Islam poses a threat to «Western civilization», with a particular focus on «Muslims living in Europe», that is, within the European counter-jihad movement seen predominantly in terms of immigration", particularly Muslim immigration A lack of trust in regional, political and economic «elites», with a particular focus against the European Union Counter-jihad movement One of the first organizations of the Counter Jihad Movement (CJM), the 910 Group, was founded in 2006 and announced on Gates of Vienna, a principal blog of the CJM since 2004. Its stated purpose was to defend liberties, human rights, and religious and political freedoms that are under assault from extremist groups who believe in Islamist supremacy. By April 2007, the Counter Jihad current became visible as a movement operating in northwestern Europe after a Counter Jihad summit. 
organized by a transatlantic network of anti-Islam bloggers, was held in Copenhagen, Denmark. In October 2007, a second summit, Counterjihad Brussels 2007, was hosted by the Belgian Flemish nationalist party Vlaams Belang in the European Parliament building in Brussels, Belgium. This conference has been regarded as a crucial event in the movement's history and featured keynote speakers. Bat Yeor and David Littman followed by country reports from delegates Paul Belin and Philip Duinter Vlaams Belang, Belgium, Stefan Hera Pi Blog, Germany, Nidra Polar Pajamas Media Blog, France, Gerard Batten UK Independence Party, UK, Ted Ekeroth Swedish Democrats, Sweden, Lars Hedegaard International Free Press Society, Denmark, Jens Tomas Anfeinsen Honest Thinking Blog, Norway, Kenneth Sikorsky Tundra Tabloids Blog, Finland, Johannes Janssen Holland, Adriana Bolcini Geyer, Lizestrada Blog, Italy, Tri and Ungaranu Romania, Elizabeth Sabadich Wolf Austria, Matthias Zmo Czech Republic, with further speeches by Area Eldad Moladet, Israel. Patrick Sukdeo, Institute for the Study of Islam and Christianity, Barnabas Fund, UK, Dr. Mark Kogan, Professor of International Law, Vesalius College, Belgium, Sam Solomon, Islamic Affairs Consultant, Christian Concern, Robert Spencer, Jihad Watch, David Horowitz Freedom Center, Andrew Bostom, and Laurent Artur du Plessis. A March 2012 Counter Jihad Conference in Denmark drew 200 to 300 supporters from throughout Europe. Ten times the number of left-wing protesters staged a counter-demonstration. The 2012 conference in Denmark, was alleged by its organisers, the English Defence League to mark the starting point of a pan-European movement. There have been no CJM conferences since 2013, pointing to a decline in the movement. Organisation <laughs> 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 Blogs such as Gates of Vienna, Jihad Watch, Atlas Shrugs, Politically Incorrect, The Brussels Journal are central to the transatlantic counter-jihad movement Notable figures include, the editors of these blogs, respectively Edward Ned May pseudonym Baron Bodice, Robert Spencer, Pamela Geller, Stefan Hera, and Paul Belin. Notable writers in the counter jihad movement are Bat Yeor, David Horowitz, and Fjordman. Think tanks such as the International Free Press Society and the David Horowitz Freedom Center have had an important role in providing funds and establishing international links. In time, a network of formal organizations has been established, with its main centers in Europe and the United States. A transatlantic umbrella organization Scion was established in 2012. The International Free Press Society lists representatives from many parts of the counter jihad spectrum on its board of advisors. Arabia theorist Bat Yeor is on the board of advisors, while owner of the blog Gates of Vienna, Edward S. May, serves as outreach coordinator on its board of directors. Topic: <laughs> American counter jihad movement. The U.S.-based Stop Islamization of America is led by Pamela Geller and Robert Spencer, as a program under their American Freedom Defense Initiative According to the AFDI website, the initiative aims, among other activities, to create state organizations that work towards the initiative's aims at a local level organize grassroots small groups at the local level to fight what it labels, "...specific Islamic supremacist initiatives." in American cities Build strategic alliances with activist groups in Europe and Israel to engage in open and stealthy counter-jihad measures Promote candidates who «fight against the march of Islamic supremacists» Host conferences «that educate Americans about leftist indoctrination and Islam's quest for domination» SIOA has been accused by the Anti-Defamation League of Promote a conspiratorial anti-Muslim agenda under the guise of fighting radical Islam. The group seeks to rouse public fears by consistently vilifying the Islamic faith and asserting the existence of an Islamic conspiracy to destroy American values. In 2010, a group dubbed Team B2, patterned after the anti-communist 1970s Team B, published a report titled Sharia: The Threat to America which has been cited as influencing the movement's discourse and the public's perception with the election of Donald Trump to the United States presidency in 2017 some have claimed that the american wing has achieved some influence in the us administration topic 
European Counter-Jihad Movement The Umbrella Organization, Stop Islamization of Europe, was founded by Anders Gravers Peterson, who also sits on the board of the Stop Islamization of Nations. There are numerous affiliated, Stop the Islamization of and Defence Leagues in several European countries, among them Stop Islamization of Denmark, Stop Islamization of Norway, and the English Defence League. Counter-jihad ideology In the words of Toby Archer, a scholar of political extremism and terrorism, counter-jihad discourse mixes valid concerns about jihad-inspired terrorism with far more complex political issues about immigration to Europe from predominantly Muslim countries. It suggests that there is a threat not just from terrorism carried out by Islamic extremists but from Islam itself. Therefore, by extension, all European Muslims are a threat. Arun Kundnani, in a report published by the International Centre for Counterterrorism, writes that the counter jihad movement has evolved from earlier European far right movements through a shift from race to values as identity markers. In moving from neo Nazism to counter jihadism, the underlying structure of the narrative remains the same. Quote, Continuing on this note, he writes that comparing the counter-jihadist worldview to the older, neo-Nazi one, Muslims have taken the place of blacks and multiculturalists are the new Jews. According to prominent counter-jihadist Edward S. May, writing under the pseudonym Baron Bodasi, the counter-jihadist movement is based on the belief that Islam is above all a totalitarian political ideology, sugar coated with the trappings of a primitive desert religion to help veil its true nature. The publicly stated goal of Islamic theology and political ideology is to impose the rule of Islam over the entire world, and make it part of Dar al Islam, the house of submission. C. A. S. Mudd argues that various conspiracy theories with roots in Bat Yeor's Arabia are important to the movement. The main theme of these theories is an allegation that European leaders allow a Muslim dominance of Europe, whether by intention or not, through multicultural policies and lax immigration laws. According to Hope Not Hate, counter-jihad discourse has replaced the racist discourse of right-wing, populist and nationalist politics in America and Europe, with the language of cultural and identity wars. Toby Archer detects a difference between the European and American wings of the movement. The American wing emphasizes an external threat, essentially terrorist in nature. The European wing sees a cultural threat to European traditions stemming from immigrant Muslim populations. While Archer notes that the perceived failure of multiculturalism is shared across much of the political spectrum, he argues the counter-jihad movement is a particular conservative manifestation of this trend. He acknowledges the movement's conservative defense of human rights and the rule of law, but he believes by rejecting progressive policy it rejects much of what Europe is today. The views of the counter jihad movement have been criticized as a source of support for the anti Muslim views of individuals inspired to take violent direct action. Anders Bering Breivik, responsible for the 2011 Norway attacks, published a manifesto explaining his views, which drew heavily on the work of counter jihad bloggers such as Fjordman. Daniel Pipes argues that a close reading of his manifesto suggests that Breivik wanted to discredit and undermine the movement's dedication to democratic change to further Breivik's dream for revolution as the only alternative. Bruce Barr argues that the association of criticism of Islam with violence implies that, "...to be opposed to jihad is, by definition, not only a bad but a downright dangerous thing." Breivik has later identified himself as a fascist and voiced support for neo-Nazis, stating that he had exploited counter-jihad rhetoric in order to protect «ethno-nationalists» and instead start a media drive against what he deemed «anti-nationalist counter-jihad» supporters. Executive director of the Institute of Race Relations, Liz Fekete, has argued that although most of the counter-jihad movement «stops short of advocating violence to achieve their goals», the most extreme parts share much of Breivik's discursive frameworks and vocabulary. She counterposits this with more mainstream counter-jihadists, that warn of Islamization as a result of naivety or indecisiveness, whom she identifies as a source of legitimacy for the former. 
Theologist and philosopher Marius Timon Mialand has described the role given to Christianity in some parts of the counter-jihad movement and has identified some aspects of the movement's ideology that he says links it to fascism-like conspiracy theories The establishment of an allegedly continuous and coherent connection between the present-day conflict between the Christian West and Muslims, whereas analyses based on established historical science will dismiss any such claim as unfounded. A claim that mainstream politicians and media in Western countries have in effect become internal enemies or «traitors» by respectively allowing the creation of multicultural societies and advocating «Marxism» and «political correctness». This, in turn, has allowed Muslims to settle in Western lands, and thereby allegedly opened them to attack from within. And, lastly, a Nietzschean, post-Christian worldview where the distinction between good and evil is given little attention, to the point where Christianity's ideal of «loving one's neighbor» is entirely omitted. Christianity is reduced from a system of belief to an identity marker, and a political mythology is built, that draws heavily on the Crusades. Counter-Jihad has sought to portray Western Muslims as a fifth column» collectively seeking to destabilize Western nations' identity and values for the benefit of an international Islamic movement intent on the establishment of a caliphate in Western countries. Much of the Arabia literature and counter-jihad forums describe Tachia as a manipulative strategy used by moderate Muslims to infiltrate and eventually overthrow society. Supporters are often fiercely pro-Israel. Topic: <laughs> Comparison with anti-communism. The movement has been compared to the anti-communism of the Cold War. Geert Wilders, Dutch politician and speaker at counter-jihad events, argues that Islam is a political ideology that, like communism, is a totalitarian threat to a liberal social order. The Southern Poverty Law Center compares both as similar exaggerated threats. Like the communists that an earlier generation believed to be hiding behind every rock, infiltrated Islamist operatives today are said to be diabolically preparing for a forcible takeover. The Cold War parallel is taken further by social commentator Bruce Barr, who not only compares counter jihad with anti communism, but also compares those who criticize the counter jihad movement with anti anti communists. The latter damned anti-communists as fanatical, paranoid conspiracy theorists while remaining all but silent about the evils of communism itself. Today it is fashionable to hold that the good guys are the counter-counter-jihadists, the journalists, activists, and others who make a career of slamming counter-jihadists. Author Roger Kimball agrees. See also References Monkgaard, Daniel Carl. 2010. V. Warblog Without End. Online Anti-Islamic Discourses as Persuadables. PhD. The University of Iowa. Retrieved the 26th of August 2012.